Hey, cool, I got mail. Check this out. Hano from the Linux CNC forum, who's also got a Maho, sent me a package. Yeah, so let's open this up. What do we got here? It's a ring light. Hano designed a, a light for his Maho, which basically bolts up around the spindle using an existing um, anti-rotation tooling bolt on the Maho. It runs off the standard 24 volts that the, uh, that the Maho has available. This is way cool. He's obviously cast it into clear, I guess it's uh, epoxy or something. So it's completely sealed. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Let's get it installed, shall we? And isn't this cool? He didn't just send me the light. There's also a little baggie of uh, parts for, for the installation, which consists of, I guess, the mount bolt. Cool, I'm guessing that this is a resistor to drop the 24 volts down to the voltage which the, the LED lights need. There's a couple of uh, cable clamps and cable ties and even some heat shrink. Thanks, Hano, you really thought of everything. That's cool. So here we are looking straight up at the spindle and you can see there's a tooling hole here. It's like an M12. I think it's used as a for fitting anti-rotation devices for some tooling. I think the feature's designed for this sort of thing. This is my Tapmatic automatic tapping head. See in the case of the Tapmatic I made up this steel bar which threads into that tooling hole and gives it something to work against. That's the hole that this light is going to mount to. Very nice, very well protected cable he's given me there. It's in a very hard plastic plastic wrapper. It's kind of cool on the Mahu, you could do pretty much everything with a 19 millimeter spanner. Remove the head, rotate the head, all the T-nut mounting stuff, everything works around a 19mm spanner. Now in the photos Hano sent me, uh, he ran the wiring up to the hydraulic line for the tool release of the head. And then down underneath this cover, which then runs down to the, to the main control. Now, I need to remove all of this stuff when I move the machine shortly, so I'm just going to run this uh, with temporary wiring for the meantime, and I'll do it permanently once I take the covers off. Now the first step will be mounting it using uh, the little clamps he gave, using these two screw fasteners. Just had to move the camera for a second to get a better angle on that to get it started. So from there a couple of cable ties or zip ties to hold it to the hydraulic line. This is where Hano gets to look away in horror. Um, 
As I said, I've got a bigger project coming up where I'm going to have to take off all the guards on the machine. But in the meantime, I've been running these temporary sort of installations through an existing hole in the side of the electrical cabinet. For example, this here is the wiring for the, uh, the tool height setter. It also runs, runs in this way temporarily. So that's what we'll be doing with the, uh, with the LED lighting wiring for now. Not permanent. So we have here 5 to 30 volts in, earth, and then the red and the black wires out. And the earth. You're putting some ferrules on them. These are the wires out. You know what I normally forget when I do this is forget to thread the piece of heat shrink on first. Okay, just heat shrink those. So from here this needs to go to power, and this one here needs to go to ground. The Mahu's got three 24 volt DC buses, 202, 204, and terminal 200. However, 204 2 and 200 are both powered through 7K1 and 7K2, which are e-stop relays. So the only bus which is always powered is 202 to a ground at terminal 201. Now unfortunately, I don't have any free terminals on those two. So I've got it connected into terminals uh, 202 is the, is the power line and 203 is the earth. Check this out. Isn't that awesome? So as soon as you restop it, the light will go out. I'll see what it's like with this. Maybe I'll put it onto the one of the other buses that's always on um, when I take all the covers off and uh, and wire it in properly. But for now, that's awesome. Thanks a lot, Hano.